so labs two and three for the 1701 course, the clinical orientation course, are where the students will begin to learn the competency assessment for the laparotomy setup for that course. You also will perform the Bookwalter checkoff at the beginning of the second lab. So I usually have the students come in and they'll view, there is a video within the Moodle course, it's under unit three, counting where it has a it's about an eight and a half minute video where it will identify all the pieces of the book walter and then also talk to the students about how to organize the pan and also how to count each of the instruments or the, each of the pieces that are included within the book walter and then shows them how to attach it onto the bed now hopefully you'll have a book walter that's available to you within your facility obviously the number of pieces that are in your pan will vary from the ones that we have at the school so and if your technique for counting the book Walter is a little bit different than the technique that's shown in the video, that's fine. If you will just review with the students how to count the pieces, what the names are, and also how it will attach onto the bed and how the ratchet mechanisms attach onto the blade to prepare it for the surgeon. So there's a checkoff for that in the checkoff section, which was in the back of the, the progression notebook before the competency assessment information. So again, make sure that you sign that off for the student and date it, and then just go ahead and keep it in the progression notebook and we will keep all of those and then collect those at the very end. And I'll have you submit that to me so that we can put it into the student's permanent file. Okay, after that, then we'll begin the competency assessment information for the laparotomy back table setup. So remember, all of that information was in the back section here where it went into all the information about the laparotomy. So it had it in the table format, it had it in the grade sheet where it showed each of the points that's associated with the skill and then it had it written out word for word. So you'll see here the necessary items and then also it talks about how generally how I do this in lab is I will demonstrate a section for the students where I actually put a gown and gloves on and I go through the motions and actually show them everything up to a certain point and then I allow them to demonstrate. If you have two students, you'll want them to work in pairs where one will act in the circulating role and the other one will be the one that's actually setting up. And then once you get to the point that you've demonstrated, then this, you will clean up and then the students will switch roles. So for the first section that I show them, I show them up through the opening, the gowning and gloving, the organization of the back table through the performance of the count. So that's the first section that I show them. Now the videos that are in the Moodle course in the lab section, it'll have the actual videos of the competency assessment. So it'll have them for laparotomy and laparoscopic. So you'll wanna make sure that you watch those and kind of follow the technique. There's also diagrams in here of what the table should look like. And then also eventually what the Mayo stands will look like when we teach that section as well. But basically, like I said, I'll go through um, in the very beginning for some of those skills that they learned in 1601 in the asepsis course, I really have them explain to me the things that I should be thinking about how I'm opening, how I'm opening the bath table, when I'm scrubbing, when I'm gowning, just kind of re reinforcing those skills that they've already learned. And then when we get to the new information of how to set up the table, and also how to perform the count. I really focus on teaching them a lot about why they're doing what they're doing, not just telling them to memorize the order, but really having them understand the purpose behind each of the ways that we're doing things. So I would demonstrate through the count, have the students practice, and then the next section I would add on to the end. So I would have them stop, they can leave the table if it's the second time that they've been through, and then show them the setup of the Mayo stand and also the preparation of the cords that will go on the Mayo and the light handles and the laps that need to go on the Mayo as well. So I show them that next section, again, describing to them why the Mayo is set up the way that it is, why the ringed instruments are off the back, why the, the sharps are always on the edge that's furthest away from us, those kinds of things. Again, you can watch the videos for further explanation of that. So then I would have them then demonstrate from the very beginning up through that next section. So up through the setup of the Mayo stand and the preparation of the cords. Okay, so that's usually um, enough for lab two. And then lab three will just teach the, the rest of the competency assessment for laparotomy. So generally when the students come in at the beginning of that lab, I have them set up as we've already learned. So up through everything that we've learned. So up through the preparation of the mail with the cords on it. So I'll tell them to go ahead and get started. I walk around, uh, I watch them, I give them 
pointers, I point out aseptic breaks that might occur. Whenever something happens as well, I like to use it as a teachable moment for everybody else. So we talk about it. I have the students try to problem solve, and then we talk about the answers. We talk about how it would be corrected. We talk about real life and how things might be different than what's happening in the lab and some of the gray areas of asepsis that they might encounter. But then um, after they get set up through the mail and the cords, then I will demonstrate the next section. And I usually pretty much do that whole next section or the whole second half of the competency assessment up through the closing count. So after we've prepared the mayo, so then we'll start with all the accessory duties, the loading the sponge stick, the getting the fluids on and properly labeling, and then doing all of those accessory duties, then gowning and gloving the surgeon, go on to draping the patient with the laparotomy drape, pulling up and attaching the cords, and then performing the timeout, handing the knife to the surgeon, and then the performance of the closing count, as well as then the medication identification, the five post-op duty identification, and also then just starting to talk about the suture identification. At this point, they probably haven't been through the sutures in Procedures 1 class, so they probably won't be able to practice the suture identification too much. Um, that'll come a little bit later on, but we just talk about how that's going to be a portion of that competency assessment for them. So as you teach that to the students, you can have them follow along as you demonstrate it, have them hold the competency assessment sheet and kind of follow along with the skills as you demonstrate it to them. But then once you've demonstrated it to them, then it's their turn to go ahead and demonstrate and then just have them go through it as, you know, as many times as they can, depending on what time frame you have available for them to practice. And then just each time that they do it, they should be trying to utilize less prompts, either from you or their partner, um, less times that they're looking at pictures. A lot of times I have the pictures of the tables posted in front of the table so that they can look at those. But then as we get going throughout the quarter, I'll then take down some of that resource information for them so that they're having to remember uh, those items as they continue to learn the skills and get further on so that they're doing it more independently as the quarter goes on as they gain additional experience. But that's basically labs two and three. We just spend a lot of time learning that competency assessment, trying to learn it in manageable chunks, and then having the students perform the whole thing from the beginning all the way through the end and the performance of each of those skills.